pa ma pa 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 Hello and welcome to the next thrilling installment. A thrill of art talks. Today we're talking about an incredibly important topic, composition. Joining me today is the lovely Board of Infinite Wisdom. Uh, she's graciously offered to help me out today to help me visually explain uh, some of these concepts we'll be going over related to composition. Are you ready? Are, are you ready, Board of Infinite Wisdom, to talk about composition with the good people of uh, the internet? She says yes. Let's go. All right, first thing I want to talk about <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about this for so long. Who here is familiar with this? Uh, yeah. uh, Alright, okay, so here we go. So, we got our little man here. This stuff. Yeah. The rule of thirds. Rule of thirds, and uh, this thing, you know, people make that little box with the Fibonacci spiral. Um, all that stuff, I think, is trash. 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 Bold statement, I know. Um, <laughs> but here's why. So, I think things like rule of thirds, um, is a good way when you're very very early on learning art um, to explain to somebody the general idea of not just sticking stuff anywhere that you know you, there's like a placement and a balance to things um, but then very quickly after that I feel like this is uh, way too uh, basic and restrictive composition is as big a topic to be explored as anything else, like value in color and whatever. To say like, you know, oh, just use a uh, blue with red. You're so restricted there in what you can do. Obviously, putting things in the third section of an image isn't wrong, um, but there's so much more to be done than just thinking of it like, you know, these like little boxes and like where things go. So uh, I would like to now offer an alternative to this stuff. Here we go. What is composition? Usually we think of objects in space, but there's much more to composition than that. There is the composition of your values, your colors, your textures, your edges. Okay, what is this? What is this? A guy on some fields with some mountains in the back and some clouds. We see it as representing uh, this environment. Um, but really it's just, it's abstract. This is just an abstract collection of, of shapes and values that we see as being something. So this is kind of my main point. Whatever we see, any painting that we see, um, even if it's just like a, a portrait or something that we really, really believe as, you know, representing something, it's still just a collection of shapes and values and textures, but we see it as being something. So my point with this is the skill of composition is in being able to create um, compelling abstract art. How can I make this thing that has to represent stuff, like uh, people or a scene, also an interesting abstract? So I'm going to try and quickly break down uh, this into an even more abstract version so you can kind of see what I mean. Um, let's redo it down here. And then we have your dots. And then there's some slightly bigger dots down there. 
jagged shape. I just did him like this. So I've just tried to take the same thing that we can see as being a scene and take it just one step back so we can see the abstract thing I'm talking about. This is still this, um, but this is kind of how you see it um, to try and make that compelling abstract. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a weird thing to try and explain, but uh, I find this is really um, the most important thing I've learned about composition. Uh, once you start to see these representational things as just abstract uh, components that we see as being something, you get to play with this side of it more, uh, which in turn is going to make this more interesting. If I flip this around, this probably doesn't look like anything. When we're playing it with it like this, it opens up a way for you to create something that's more personal to you, that's more unique to you. So quickly I'd like to just look at some examples of abstracts and paintings that are near abstract and basically just kind of give you ideas about how you can uh, play with all of this, this abstract way of looking at it. So look at this painting by FC Moisinko. Moisenko. So there's a very dynamic abstract going on here, lots of very sharp, strong directional lines, movement, areas of different textures, etc. Um, it's interesting to look at, but also what we have is this guy on a horse and all these guys behind him um, coming out of that interesting abstract. Now if we look at this other image by him here, we have a more fleshed out uh, looking painting here, but still underneath lies this interesting abstract, which is the composition. Here's another one, really interesting little composition, but of course it's also um, these guys behind this horse but this very graphic kind of cut out shape um, that is a horse, but might as well be anything else. Um, it's just really interesting visually. Here's a fun piece by Susan Licht Lichtman, Lichtman a more contemporary artist. Basically here you can see quite clearly that, um, that line between abstract and representational. This is kind of uh, nicely both. So we can see like very clearly there's you know, like a kitchen or whatever, and there's all these people. But if you squint, it's very easy to just see it as um, the summation of its shapes, uh, which are interest just interestingly put together. Just a nice example of that line, paying attention to both representational and abstract, and working them together to make an interesting scene. An example from uh, within the games industry itself, Theo Prince, the goddamn king of this, he plays that line between abstract and representational so damn fantastically. Uh, if you look up his work, uh, you'll see he goes all the way from super, super abstract to very much a representation of a scene. And the way he plays with it is just so nice. Here it really kind of like plays between the two. So he has this more concrete area, but then as we get further away from this focal point, uh, the more abstract it gets. So this is a really important point. This is the way that our eyes work. Where we look, um, we see very kind of concrete information, but then our peripherals, uh, we think we're seeing a lot of information, but really we're not. We're seeing um, this abstraction that our brain fills in as like a, a whole a thing. And Teo's done that really beautifully here and really played with that idea to create uh, a really interesting visual that also represents a scene. Here's another one, super mega awesome. Check out all of Teo's work if you don't know him. He's the man. Couldn't recommend him enough. Freshest guy in the industry right now. Uh, one more uh, from Benjamin Bjorklund, contemporary artist, super awesome guy. Basically I wanted to show this example because obviously it's mad abstract, but it's also very much a face. Uh, just to try and uh, make the point that these abstracts exist everywhere and uh, once you can train yourself to see them in faces as well you can make much more interesting portraits and obviously 
um, our brains are really uh, trained to find faces everywhere, so it's the hardest to um, see as abstract. Uh, but it's definitely there, and it's really valuable to be able to see it this way. So there's one of those. And also one more thing. We make art in these rectangles for some reason. I don't know why it ended up that way, but there, there's nothing to say that composition has to be in a rectangle at all. Like, what about... What about pyramid comp? Pyramid composition. Yeah, with a little flat top on there. What about... What about this? That's weird. That's, but that's, you know, this could be a painting. And this is what I'm talking about with the whole rule of thirds thing. Once you start playing with stuff like this, you know, where's your, where's your thirds? If I took like, uh, if the composition was, yeah, this, if, where's the thirds? You know, this is its own thing. Every composition, every painting is its own thing. And it's a lot more fun um, to just work on that skill of composition with each painting, um, build what you find would be interesting, play with new ideas, and then when something new comes up, you can just play with it, rather than be like, oh my god, I don't know what, what to do now, my rules I use don't apply here. Uh, this is why I try and stay away from rules, um, and just have knowledge and concepts to work from, so that you're freer uh, with anything that might come up, for example, like this. So like I said, composition is a bit of a weird one. I've been thinking really hard about how to explain uh, this idea of looking at it as an abstract and building your skill as basically an abstract painter to become a better representational artist. Um, that's basically the one thing I wanted to explain about composition. Just change the mindset from rules and like placing things to basically working on abstract painting. You know, you do anatomy studies, you do value studies, how do you practice composition? I think trying to make abstracts that feel interesting and balanced uh, or just exciting to you, that's how you isolated practice the skill of composition. Or at least that's one way. Here are a bunch of my own abstract experiments um, where you can see I'm just playing with uh, what could be. Um, I find that there's a really fine line where abstract starts to look like something. So it's kind of two things at once. It's an interesting abstract and it's also um, the scene. So I leave you with this, uh, this little man in this shape. This is the lesson right here. Man in shape. Composition can be anything you want. If you're a complete beginner, um, my hope is that you can watch these four videos and you can start to have a better idea of uh, how you can play with art, how you can learn all these skills and how you can uh, manipulate it to be unique to you and let you create the work that you want to make. So that's pretty much it. Thank you, um, Board of Infinite Wisdom, for uh, being on my guest today. You've been beautiful, you've been amazing. If this video is useful to you, tell your wife, tell your kids, share it around. It helps this channel grow, really helps me out. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below or on Facebook or whatever. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.